So in my last scoop loop, I wrote about my month-long experiences, and the first one being the uh, Nevada experience at Squaw Valley Ranch. And I said I was going to continue on with a series of a month long of uh, cattle handling and stockmanship experiences. I was going to ride them, but I was very fortunate. We have a young lady, Olivia Wesley, is staying here with us, and she is a film student, and she is filming all this stuff for me, so I figured I better do that rather than try to ride it. So here we are. So I left Nevada, flew to Edmonton, Alberta. So I went from, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, 50 miles from town, sagebrush, dirt roads, all that. Drove back to Reno, got on a plane, flew into Edmonton, Alberta, and there's not a motel to be had anywhere close. And anything I found was like 600 bucks. So that what in the world's going on? How has the world changed? I haven't been up there for three or four years. Well, there's a Garth Brooks concert happening in Edmonton right there where I was at. Friday and Saturday night, I got in there Saturday night, and there were 60,000 people each night at the concert. And so there's motels nowhere. So I went about 15, 20 miles from the airport, found a nice little room, spent the day, and then went to work the next week in Edmonton for two days, and then I traveled down from Edmonton. That was with uh, Zoetis. And then uh, I rode down to the Lethbridge area and spent the next three days working for Coldale Vet in uh, feedlots that they service. So if you've never been to a feedlot or been around the feedlot industry, it's really hard to understand what happens in a feed yard. But there's many, many different kinds. And so a lot of the feed yards here in the U.S., they are large corporate yards, 50, 60, 80, 90,000 head of cattle in a yard. Up in Lethbridge, it's in, and the, I, I, uh, I know when you drive by or when you're around a feedlot, you look in there and it looks just like a prison for cattle. But as you get in there and you start understanding things, it's not. I look at it like a resort for cattle. They get three meals a day, they get to hang around their buddies, it's a really a nice deal unless there's mud or severe hot weather or severe cold weather. Then it's not so fun. But any other time all the conditions are great and it's a wonderful place and the cattle seem to me, from what I can read of an animal, they are very content. When they get in deep mud or, or too much heat or too much cold, that's when they have challenges. So, okay, back to Canada. Canada has a, I would say the average size yard in Canada is 10 to 15,000. Some are 5,000, some are 20,000, but mostly they're around that 10,000 range, give or take a couple of thousand. They're family farm owned, and they, their main ingredient that they feed there, which is different than the US, they don't feed so much corn. All they do, they feed some. They feed mostly barley. So it's a barley fed finishing ration. The thing that they have a lot in Alberta is wind. So all the feed yards have wind breaks and that takes the wind and the discomfort of that for the cattle. They also bed the cattle on what they call a bed pack or a straw pack and they put straw out in the middle of the, the pen and it makes a big pile and then it kind of ferments so to say and it creates heat in the winter time and that's a nice place for them to lay down in the minus sub-zero temperatures that we get a lot in Alberta. Most of them feed two to three times a day and uh, they have lots of bunk space and they really got good cattle care. So Alberta is really, really a great place to feed cattle. The challenge that they were having was is mud and mud is always a problem in feed yards. So the big trend that I've seen in the last five, six years is they are putting, it's not concrete, but it's called fly ash or PP something and it's a hard base where the cattle don't have to sink in the mud when it gets wet and difficult. So they've got it all covered. They got their windbreak, they got their bed pack, and they've got good footing to get to the feed bunk and it really truly is a resort now. So that's that's the conditions that I'm seeing and I really think cattle are content and I don't know if cattle can be happy but they're content and I think their quality of life is real real good. The big thing that I've seen that's changed a lot is, is the cowboy is going out of the feed yard and more of an inexperienced type stockman is coming in. 
There's still some that use horses and they're horseback quite a bit, but I see less and less and more. A lot of the crews that I worked with were very young, enthusiastic. They were happy to be there. They wanted to learn. They, they didn't have the cowboy mentality. I already know it. They wanted to learn about stockmanship. And a lot of them had rubber boots up to their knees and shorts. And it was real hot, and it's really funny to see the difference of, you know, the cowboy culture to the new age, the new modern feedlot worker that I'm seeing coming in. And they were enthusiastic, gung-ho, and wanted to learn a lot. So that's the big thing I see about Alberta. I think it's a business that's thriving, and it's so much different from the big, wide-open country that I spent so much time with in Nevada but it's a great part of our industry, and as long as we have good animal welfare, animal care, good conditions, good quality feeds, we really create a wonderful product that has a good quality of life with the five freedoms and all those things that are so important, and that's what makes the world go round. We have great feed yards here in the U.S. as well, but I just spent that time in Alberta, and I really enjoyed the young, enthusiastic people. I really think it's interesting because the, they're not corporate yards, they're, they're family or partnership owned. So they have, a, they have a lot of skin in the game, so to speak, and they really take care of their employees, their cattle, and the land. And that's, uh, that's what's going to take us into the future. So it was a great week. I'm actually going back this next week to uh, spend another week with some different feed yards in different areas. So I love the feedlot industry in Canada, I love the ranching industry in Canada. Uh, Canadians are good people and they're our neighbors and we all have to work together to make this thing work. So I'll check in with you. Next week we're going to talk about the next stop I made. It was Green Acres, which is a, it's a, a regenerative farm in Cincinnati, Ohio, just right on the edge of the city. And they're raising all grass finished products of beef, chicken, uh, turkey, and pork. And I'll tell you about my experience there and how that went, how much different it was from the cattle handling and the care of animals in the feedlots in uh, Alberta. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.